Yo, what is good, Dev guys? It's your boy Kane. Yes, sir. I'm back with another video. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm working on a tutorial series here. I'm redoing the uh, the infamous Steam uh, multiplayer tutorial series, but I'm doing it completely in C++ and I'm adding a twist to it. I'm going to show you guys how to use the asset manager so that we can make things data driven. Uh, in the old series, they have a character selection screen and they go in and they manually set up all the buttons for the characters but in a game where you're going to be online and you're going to be adding new characters over time you don't want to have to keep manually going back and adding those characters every time so what we're going to do is set up the foundation for a data driven character selection screen and that's going to be my main point of this uh, series uh, even though i will be showing you how to uh, like basically do all the things that they did in that series in c plus plus uh, 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 my main focus is showing you guys the asset manager and how strong it really is. So the first thing we want to do is definitely be inside of an IDE, whether that's <coughs> ugh, Visual Studio ugh, or, you know, Ryder. You dig what I'm saying? Go ahead, Ryder. Get your boy, get your boy a sponsorship, baby. I need it. Talk to your boy. Uh, so we're going to come over here and wherever you want to have this set up at. I usually put things like this, like singleton stuff inside of a core folder and, uh, don't worry about the organization of this project. This is just if you're already working on a project and you want to learn how to set up the asset manager, this is for you. But I will be redoing this as a as a whole from scratch where we'll set it all up to where everything makes sense. But just pay attention if you want to get this set up in your project. So we're going to go add. We're going to add a Unreal class. It's going to be from you object. And we're going to go ahead and call this uh, for me. I'm going to call it my Steam. Uh, this is my Steam asset manager. So I'm going to do that. It's going to set up the class for me with the uh, the baseline code for me. I'm going to extend this from U Asset Manager. And go ahead and press Enter there. And it didn't include the header for some reason. So I'm going to Alt Enter and include the definition for the Asset Manager. The first thing we want to do is come in here and create a constructor. It's going to be an empty constructor, but we, we, we need it just in case. You know what I mean? So U Steam Manager. And we're just going to give it a... Uh, open and close curly brace so that it's empty. And we also need this type called, uh, it's a struct, it's an F primary uh, asset type right here. F primary asset type. Now, if you go ahead and click into this, it says a primary asset type represented as an F name internally and implicit, implicitly convertible back and forth. This is, exists so the Blueprint API can understand it's not a normal F, F name. So basically what this asset type is, is a way to communicate in between the asset manager and the UI or inventory systems, what type of asset this particular asset that we will be using is. Uh, for this particular case, it's gonna be something that is very uh, like a static to our character selection screen. So this is gonna be a static const and the reason we're going to use static const is because we're only going to set this one time it's never going to change no matter what throughout the pop project uh, so static const f primary asset type and i'm going to call this my character item type and like i said i'm making a a, a data driven character selection screen meaning that say you have a game with four characters start now and then maybe like three months down the line you add two more characters you would just add those character asset types and then the the UI, the character selection screen will automatically update with the information because we don't like to manually do things. Like in the in the old series, they have the buttons manually set up. You, know, you got to go in and set up all eight buttons for all eight characters, and that could be real tedious for like a game like Smite that has damn near 150 characters. I don't know how many characters they got, but they got a shit ton of characters in that game. Well, yeah, a game with a lot of characters, you don't want to have to manually go in and set that stuff up. It's prone to human error. So we're, we're, we're going to do this very uh, dynamically. So, yeah, we need this this F primary asset type just to just to let everybody know, hey, this is what we're doing with this. We also need to go ahead and make this uh, function here. This virtual void. Uh, it's an override. Virtual void start initial loading. And this is so that we can use a global uh, system. It'll globally load all of our data assets for us. Uh, I think you can also go into this and like do custom code, but I haven't gotten that deep into it. All right. Um, 
Another function that we want to do is a function that we're going to use in other um, classes just to get the asset type if we ever just to get the asset manager if we ever need it. So this is going to return. Let me put an actual comment here. This is going to return the asset manager singleton class. And this is going to be a static. It's going to return a U Steam Asset Manager reference. And we're going to call it Git. So that means we'll be able to say U Steam Asset Manager colon colon Git. And then it'll run this function here. Uh, so yeah, we got that. And that's pretty much all we need right here. So I am going to Alt insert and insert the definitions for these here. And you know, when it's an override, it's a beautiful thing to have a rider. When it's an override, it automatically does a super for you. You can't beat this, man. Nobody stands a chance. Okay. So um, we're just going to run that super. Uh, uh, I'm looking at my other project right now. And what this is for is that it, it loads the ability system globals for us. And that's like gameplay cues and stuff like that. But we won't be getting into that. That's, that's a whole nother ball game, baby. Okay, so uh, a few C sharp play people uh, are around here looking at this. You you probably seen this kind of uh, this kind of code before. It's very similar to a singleton. So we're gonna go U Steam Asset Manager pointer, and we're gonna call it this. And we're gonna set it equal to a cast using the uh, U uh, Steam Asset Manager as the object that we want to cast to. And we're going to cast from the engines asset manager. So because when we set our asset manager in the engine file, I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. Uh, this will populate here and we can cast and make sure that it's of the type that we set here. So I, I, I've always seen somewhere that people find casting confusing. And uh, I understand. Uh, I won't try to explain casting in this video, but it's like saying this is that. This is that, baby. That's it. Don't overthink it. Uh, so if this, we want to return a dereference pointer to this, all right? Because we are returning a reference here. We want to pass this by reference. We want. We don't want to. Um, this is memory management thing. Uh, like I, I gotta learn a little bit more about this type of stuff. I won't even try to explain it, but we want to dereference the pointer to this so that it's a reference. Um, and then uh, else, we want to log out something. We want to UE log, say that we haven't set up the, uh, basically saying that we haven't, and I got my own custom log here, log steam uh, MP, and it's going to ask me to declare this in the header. So let me get, let me just do that to declare the header. Then I'm going to do this uh, log steam MP. I'll show you guys how to set up a custom log in the tutorial series as well. Uh, so you can have your own custom logs and that'll print to a um, uh, print to a, a text file that you can read and debug that way. So we want a log steam. We want to say this is fatal. Uh, this is a bad, bad thing. If we don't have this set up, it's a bad thing. So fatal. And then we want to go ahead and tell it that we have an invalid asset manager. Okay, let me do this camel case in, in uh, the place that we set up the uh, asset manager. So it's the default engine dot INI file. And we must set this to the uh, Steam asset manager. So you see here this default engine INI file. We're going to open that up in a second after we finish um, with this code here. Then we're going to return a uh, dereference pointer to the new object, and we're going to just create the asset manager. But the, it should never really get to this point. So 
I don't even know why they make us type this code, but I guess it's just here to, as a safety measure. Use Steam Asset Manager and go do that. So now uh, we're returning that all at all um, places that we can return at. And I won't try. Let me try to compile, see if we run into any errors. I don't know if what I was working on before I start this video. Okay, yeah, we're good. Um, so now that we got this asset manager set up, this is pretty much all the code that you have to write for the asset manager. Uh, most things just get repetitive. There are some other functions that you can create, uh, but that's, and like I said, th those are more in-depth things that uh, is like particular to what game you're making. So let me minimize this. And then we want to go to the config we want to go to that default engine INI file and in uh, this script engine dot engine, we need to put that we're going to be using our asset manager. So the way that we would do this is that we'll go here and I'm going to just put it on the top and it's a, it's a uh, value called asset. And let me make sure I get this right. It's asset manager class name. So asset manager class name and we set it equal to a script in our directory here. And it's inside of our project file, which I, what is the name of my project? I, I believe it's uh, Steam, Steam Multiplayer. I think it's Steam MP. I, I got it, I got it double check. Oh, Steam UE5, okay. So Steam UE5, it's the name of your project, whatever the name of your project is. And then you put a dot and we give it the name of the class that we call our asset manager. So mine is Steam UE5.Steam Asset Manager. And with this typed in, you are now using your custom asset manager. So if I go here and build, get a successful build. Uh, if I go and open up the project here. Now I haven't created any data assets. I'm saving that stuff for the tutorial series. If you want to, you really want to, you know, learn more about this asset manager and how to use it in your project, uh, I say subscribe. And around, like I said, Thanksgiving break, when I start recording the videos and getting them out there, uh, we'll, we'll get into depth about um, how, how the uh, data assets and the asset manager all work together. So we got asset manager here and uh, like I said, we've already set up our asset manager to be our own custom asset manager. Uh, I won't even go into depth on this, but say we had a say we had a a type that we want to add our character type. Uh, this is directories to exclude, sorry. So primary types to scan, we would go ahead and add, and we would say this is our character, which we didn't do. That reminds me of something, character. And the asset base class, if we drop this down, it'll bring up all of the classes that we have in our project, but uh, we, uh, we haven't set up a data asset. So whenever we set up the data asset, we'll be able to select that data asset. And that's the base class of this uh, primary asset type. But since I just recognized that we need to put that character thing in here, I'm actually delete this because uh, I'm not gonna be setting that up uh, right now. And I'm going to go back to my um, rider file. And I need to go back to my asset manager. And in the CPP file, we actually need to come up here to the top and we need to, but I don't even know how this compiled without, that makes no sense. Uh, usually when you do stuff like that, it, it doesn't compile, but we need to set up the F name for the, um, for the asset type. So the asset type that we created, let me move this here and let me get rid of this. The asset type that we created right here, the primary asset type, we need to actually give it a, a value, which we haven't done. So F primary asset type. And uh, we're gonna, like I said, static and it's const. So you, you, this is kind of like the syntax for that. So you go use Steam Manager colon colon, 
and it is the uh, character item type. You see it pulls it up for us. And we want to set it equal to a text value. And we're just going to call it character. And this value, I'm not going to compile that. Uh, this value will match up with the value that we put inside of this primary asset type field here. So we'll type character and it'll know uh, it'll like line line itself up. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I want to show you guys in this video. If you're interested in more stuff like this, man, definitely subscribe to my channel. Leave a like on this video. Leave some comments. Tell me you hate me. Tell me you love me. I need to hear it all. Baby, you dig what I'm saying? I'm out of here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.